Thanks for joining us here on a Friday on the Market Day Report. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. Well, we're going to go right to Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois, and talk with Steve Georgie. We have him on the line right now. And uh, Steve, maybe you can kind of guide us on our way through the futures trade here. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the corn and soybean trade first. What do you see happening here? Well, we are, we are pulling back a little bit here this morning. Corn down a few cents, beans down a little bit here as well. But uh, yeah, it's the end of the month. So you've got these funds that are certain, they're, they're short. They're short corn, they're short beans, they're short wheat. We are seeing a little bit of a slide here finishing out the, the week. But Monday is a new month. Will we get new money buying? Will we get new ideas? Is this weather, meaning too hot, too cold in a lot of areas, snow up north? Uh, will we start to see some weather premium being put in these markets? I think we're very close to doing that. I'm reading on the Newswire here this morning where it says there is a general strike being called in Brazil that could yeah. disrupt transportation there. Uh, how much impact could that potentially have here? Well, you know, I, it, more so for the beans more than anything. We had seen export sales this past week that have been strong for beans, but for old crop beans, not new crop, new, not new business, but beans right now. And if that strike does materialize and if we see that happen, that may get uh, some life in this bean complex where we start to see that uh, rally as well, or maybe see the funds come out of their short positions here maybe next week. Now, here a couple of days ago, we were hearing talk about maybe a localized uh, labor strike in Argentina as well, yep. right? Yeah, but, you know, we're in this time frame, though, where we do see a lot of there's, – there's, there seems to be always problems this time of year as these guys – as South America starts to really export. Mm-hmm. There's port strikes, there's trucker strikes, there's whatever else there is, but there's usually these problems, and we're seeing it again. That typically is friendly for beans as we go forward. You can almost set your uh, clock or calendar by it when you start hearing talk yeah. about the labor strikes <laughs> in Brazil and Argentina. You know, it's planning season yeah. in the U.S., so uh, uh, that's for sure. Let's run through the futures trade here, and uh, we'll take a look here at the corn market first. Right now on the corn, the May contract is down three and a half cents at 3.58 and a half per bushel. December down two and a half at 3.84 and a quarter. And meanwhile, on the soybean trade uh, on the May contract, we're down one and three quarters now at 9.44 per bushel. And November new crop down two and three quarters at 9.51 and three quarters. Now there's a whole different set of fundamentals here working on the wheat trade as we wrap yep. up the week. And uh, on the wheat in Chicago, uh, May, we're two higher. July is up a penny. Kansas City wheat has the May contract. Uh, if we can uh, switch to Kansas City, uh, it's at 424 and a quarter. That would be three and a half cents higher. And July is now trading two and three quarters higher at 436 and a half. Uh, how much talk are you hearing about conditions uh, that could affect the winter wheat in the southern plains here? Yeah, you know what? There's a lot of chatter about that. You know, this cold weather coming through. And the thing is, though, is we got to remember that it is wheat. It seems like we have to kill it off a couple times before we finally get to harvest. But, you know, this is one that you know, this colder temperatures that are coming in, this will have an effect. The other thing, as I mentioned before, these funds. Funds are short quite a bit of wheat right now. And it's not that, hey, these funds are going to get really bullish. It's just that I don't need to be bearish anymore. That's going to give us a rally. That's going to give us more of the support and, and see this market firm up here just because of guys exiting short positions. And on the spring wheat trade in Minneapolis wheat, we can take a look there. We have the May contract down two and a half. However, the other months have turned higher now. Uh, July yeah. now up a penny at 5.54 and a quarter. It's about eight cents off its earlier low. Uh, let's take a look at cotton heading into the break here. We have the July down 26 at 77.70. All right, we'll be back talking more with Steve Georgie of Allendale about the markets right after this. We're talking with Steve Georgie of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. And I want to look at our uh, live cattle futures here. Remember, we had everything closing limit up yesterday on live cattle and feeder cattle, except for the nearby April contracts. And April is in a world of its own today because on live cattle, it expires today. The April on feeders expired yesterday, so it's already gone. But April live cattle, uh, that's why it shows it's up $1.35 today. Uh, some traders were telling me yesterday there was a, a big squeeze going on here in this April contract on the cattle. That's what forced 
forced it up more than a limit move yesterday. Uh, but we have June now down 37 cents this morning at 121.15 after posting an early high of 122.50. So we've already seen a very choppy market taking place in the cattle trade. August down 48 at 117.30 right now, and it uh, is not that much lower, but you know, you have to consider early today we had a high of 118.60 so it's backed off of that by $1.30 already in the early going today. Feeder cattle trade will switch over there. We have the May contract which is now the lead month. It's uh, down 78 now at 145.80 and now you have the August contract down 33 at 150.02. So that's about $1.20 off of its earlier high. We've already had fairly significant trading ranges here, uh, getting in the neighborhood of almost $2 wide in some of the feeder cattle contracts. So, all right, Steve, talk to us about this cattle market here. Uh, we had the limit up move yesterday. That means expanded limits today. Expanded margins are in effect today. So oh, yeah. more people have to keep more money on the table, uh, in their accounts anyway, to meet margin calls. Yeah. So that uh, generally will cause some people to bail out of the market just because of the money yeah. required to do that, right? And I, yes, and I, I think that's what we'd seen a little bit yesterday, too. Yeah, the cash market was crazy yesterday. You know, a lot of these packers just bidding up for cattle because they, they need them just due to lighter weights. So with weights being lighter to, in order to kill as many, I, I need more. Well, what's going to happen here? And I, I, I'm very cautious about what could happen come Monday, new month. Right. These packers can actually start calling contract cattle and saying, hey, man, <laughs> bring them in. So this is where it, it does change the picture a little bit here going into next week, new month, new attitude as well. But, yes, you're right. I mean, it is, this, is, this is on fire right now, and, and no one knows where it's going to end up today. Personal opinion, I think we might be a little bit extended, but if we continue to see this cash market stay strong, whew, who knows where it'll end up. Well, how much of this uh, rally that we saw yesterday would you attribute to that NAFTA talk? Well, it's, I think it's some. It's some. Because when you get to this NAFTA talk, yes, we pull cattle from Canada, more market-ready cattle, but we send that back as well. We process it, send it back. It's more of the feeders and the calves that we get out of Mexico that causes more of a stir. So it should be feeder-led if that is the case, and it was. But it is one of these things where that talk, now that it has calmed down, we didn't see the markets calm down, though. Okay, let's look, at, strong. let's look at the lean hog side then this morning and uh, see how the lean hog futures are doing here, Steve. Right now, of course, yesterday the lean hogs went up over $2 too. Now, lean hogs are maintaining some gains here this morning. Yep. May up 25, June now 78 higher at 73.60. That's only 20 cents from its high of the day. July up 70 at 74.72. You know, on a chart uh, there for a while, yep. it looked like uh, the hogs may have had a failure, but uh, right now the lean hog chart actually does not look too bad, does it? No. And after yesterday with that recovery that we had seen, following through again here today, seasonally for hogs, we should put in a low this time of year and rally through the month of May. And I think that's what we're trying to do. We've pushed those lows far enough where now we're starting to build up uh, some chart momentum that may give us some more upside here uh, over the next coming weeks. Steve, it's always great to visit with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Steve Georgie with Allendale incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. I hope uh, Steve has a great weekend. Lots of great information. Uh, what a resource to talk to. Absolutely. And I think as the day goes on, a lot more people are going to be turning us on to see what's going to happen with yeah, this market. Yeah, this is going to be a volatile session, I have a feeling. Okay, thank you so much. Markets Auditor Marlon Bowling.